other family who has been affected by this racism and by police brutality, I say this to you. I'm going to stand with you. I'm going to stand by you, in front of you, and wherever I need to be. Tacoma Mayor Victoria Woodard's holding a press conference 30 minutes ago, promising justice to the family of Manny Ellis and all families of color. Her announcement comes as new video of the night Ellis died was just released. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Jessica Janner Castro. And I'm Mark Wright. Good evening. The Pierce County Medical Examiner's Office ruled Manny Ellis's death is a homicide and said he died of oxygen deprivation due to being restrained. King 5's Greg Copeland is live in Tacoma tonight and has that video. Greg. Mark, the mayor made it very clear where she stands on that video, and I will tell you, not everybody agrees with her. What is not in dispute is that Manny Ellis died at this intersection three months ago while in police custody. Those were the last words that I heard my son say to me. I love you, Mom. I love you, Mom. And I can't hear that ever again. Emotional words from Manny Ellis's mother, who has already been in pain for three months. Today, she and the rest of the family demanded action and independent all, investigation outside of Pierce County. A short time later, the city council announced a special session Friday to discuss just that. Then came a news release from the Pierce County Sheriff's Department looking for help to identify three motorists who were at the scene the night of March 3rd. An hour later, Tacoma Action Collective released this video via Twitter, and we do want to warn you that the video was hard to watch. Hey! Stop! Oh my God, stop hitting him! Hitting him, just arrest him! Just arrest him! Oh my God, that looks so scary! Get your hands your back. You're gonna get it again. Put your hands behind your back. Hands behind your back. We'll show you part of it again with the scuffle already underway. Ellis goes down on his back and police jump on top of him. Then as the person shooting the video drives by moments later, behind your back. Back. You're gonna get it again. Put your hands behind your back. You'll hear them asking Ellis to put his hands behind his back while appearing to be on top of him. Now King 5 reached out to the Tacoma Action Collective, which released the video for comment. The collective provided timestamps of the video showing that it was taken on March 3rd at 11.22 p.m. Moments after that, these words from Ellis were captured on scanner traffic. After the video was released on Twitter, attorney James Bible today told me this. The video, coupled with the recording of Manuel Ellis's last words and the newly located witness, leads the family and the dedicated social justice organizations that support them to believe that criminal prosecution is necessary, end quote. But Pierce County Sheriff's Department spokesperson Ed Troyer has a completely different take on the videos. You can hear a neighbor yell something about he hit him in the head, and the fight was on. The best part about this video, and what we've been telling everybody all along, once the fight was over, they were very polite, out of breath, and they were saying, put your hands behind your back, very, very calm, even though one of them had been assaulted and the fight was on. We're not trained to lose a fight. We're not trained to just take a beating. You might lose your gun, you might lose your other equipment, and as soon as that confrontation is over, they're very calm and trying to get them to comply. Tonight, the candles from last night's vigil still burn here at 96 in Ainsworth and South Tacoma. I talked to Manny's brother a little bit earlier today. He's just hurt is what he, how he described it after watching the video. The four officers involved in this were put on leave. They were placed back on the department for a while and just yesterday they were put back on leave. Again, the Tacoma City Council is meeting tomorrow to talk about an independent investigation taking this outside of Pierce County. We're live in Tacoma tonight. Greg Copeland, King 5 News. Greg, thank you. So as we mentioned, the mayor of Tacoma gave a blistering speech about a half hour ago. She called for change and justice. She said today it stops in Tacoma. And she also made specific demands that Greg briefly mentioned regarding the death of Manuel Ellis. I am demanding tonight that the Pierce County Sheriff review and confirm every action taken by each officer 
I demand that the sheriff provide details of the actions of each officer on the scene, and I am then directing the city manager to fire each officer involved. She also called for the city manager to allocate funding for body cams for every Tacoma police officer. Mayor Woodards had many moving things to say to the people of the city of Tacoma. We're going to uh, post the entire press conference on king5.com. You'll be able to find it there. She was certainly passionate as she gave that speech. Seven nights of protesting the death of George Floyd and those in Seattle don't seem any less determined to make their voices heard tonight. Britt Moore is joining us from the Capitol Hill neighborhood of Seattle with an update. Britt? Yeah, Jessica, just within the last 30 minutes or so, the crowd that second protest that we've been talking about all afternoon and then all night, well, they've joined the original protest here at 11th and Pine. In fact, there are now some are talking to the crowd. They've talked about white allyship. They're talking about ways to move this conversation forward as they continue to demand justice for George Floyd and for the black community. Here, like I've said, all afternoon, all night has remained largely peaceful. Uh, and that's a good thing here because it seems like people are really energized just from the people that I've talked to. In fact, I caught up with a man who decided to bring his son to the protest. He said he wanted a. I feel like it's my it's my job. It's my responsibility to have him exposed to this and He's already learning who George Floyd is. He's learning who Breonna Taylor is. And I don't want him to learn that through a textbook. I want him to learn that through me personally. I want him to learn that through this experience. Yeah, this crowd is pretty consistent. Uh, no indicator stay out here. But again, the crowd has doubled within the last 30 minutes or so. And they're looking like uh, they plan to stay for a while and communicate just want to be heard and they continue to demand justice for George Floyd. But for now, I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. Britt Moore, live in Capitol Hill. Britt, thank you for that. Um, Seattle Police Chief Carmen Best has met at least one of the demands from protesters today. She's ordering officers to show their badge numbers even when they have a black mourning band on the badge. Protesters say they're concerned about those bands, which are worn to honor fallen officers. They say it makes it difficult to identify officers. The department has to strike a balance between honoring officers who are killed in the line of duty and our responsibility to maintain the public's trust. All officers will have their badge numbers prominently displayed. Testers also asked the mayor today to defund the police department by 50%. She said she would not do that, but says the department will increase its commitment to meeting with the community. Meanwhile, city attorney Pete Holmes says the city is withdrawing its request to lift the federal oversight of the Seattle Police Department, or what's called a consent decree. King 5's Tony Black explains what the decree is and why the city decided to change their mind. The Seattle Police Department has been under a federal consent decree since 2012. I believe it's brought significant, important, systematic changes to the Seattle Police Department. A consent decree is just a legal term for a settlement or agreement. The Department of Justice began investigating SPD in 2011 over several instances of excessive force, particularly on minorities. Put the knife down! Mayor Durkin was U.S. Attorney at the time and investigated the case. The investigation found SPD was violating the Constitution and biased policing. The city and DOJ agreed on a list of reforms mostly around discipline, accountability, force, and community oversight. A judge ruled they needed to sustain the reforms for a two-year period to be in full compliance. The judge started that two-year clock in 2018, though last year he said even with SPD in compliance when it comes to use of force, they still had a lot of work to do when it came to accountability and discipline. Last month, the city and Department of Justice filed a joint motion asking the court to remove the parts of the decree they were in compliance with, including use of force, but not accountability or discipline. And then the protest happened. City Attorney Pete Holmes on Wednesday withdrew the city's motion. In a statement, he said the over 12,000 complaints from the weekend's protest would be a vigorous test of the city's accountability system. But we also heard from community very loudly and very clearly that they felt that motion was an indication that we were, we were abandoning 
the principles of the consent decree. Both Mayor Durkin and Chief Carmen Vest have said they are committed to being in full compliance. Tony Black, King 5 News. And we have a story right now on king5.com about the consent decree with all of the links to the documents you might want to take a look at. So just text the word decree to 206-448-4545 and we can also send it right to your phone. Time now for the Fast Five on King 5. The city of Bellevue has canceled its curfews through Saturday, so there's no curfew this evening. Instead, the city has said that it will conduct daily risk assessments to determine what's needed for overall public safety. A manhunt in Kittitas County has forced the closure of U.S. forest lands and campgrounds west of Highway 97 as deputies search for Jorge Alcantara Gonzalez. He's wanted in the disappearance of Ian Eccles, a Kent man missing since May 18th. The Coyote Ridge Correction Center in central Washington now has 46 cases of coronavirus. That includes 10 staff members and 36 inmates. The facility is upping social distancing and hygiene protocols and is in a 10-day quarantine. Federal health officials announced race, age, and gender data will be required with coronavirus testing starting in August. The U.S. government has faced some criticism over the pandemic's demographic disparities. Congressional Democrats are preparing a sweeping package of police reform bills after George Floyd's death, including changing police accountability laws and creating a database of police use of force incidents. Lawmakers are expected to unveil the bills on Monday. Still ahead tonight, a doctor helping fight the coronavirus gives his take on protesting during a pandemic and what he says may surprise you. Also tonight, the White House denies tear gassing protesters this week, but video appears to show otherwise. Our Verify team gets to the bottom of it.